Hello and welcome to a tutorial on the Jet Elements Portfolio widget. I'm Andrew from Crocoblock. In this video, I'll guide you through creating and customizing a website portfolio using the Jet Elements plugin and the free version of the Elementor WordPress editor. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the updates on the new Crocoblock products and tutorials to help you make better WordPress websites. If you have the Jet Elements plugin activated, you can jump straight to a post or a page where the portfolio will be created. For this tutorial, I'll start by creating a new page and selecting the Elementor editor. Go to the widget library and type portfolio in the search bar. After you see the Jet Elements portfolio widget icon, drag and drop it onto the page where it automatically will create a portfolio template. On the left sidebar you'll see all the necessary customization settings for your project. The Content tab by default has six item bars that allow you to choose what will be displayed for each item, including a picture, title, description and a button with a link. After clicking an item bar, the first thing we can do is assign a category. This category will appear as a clickable button above the portfolio, enabling users to select all items from the same category. The next field takes us to the WordPress media library to choose an image. After selecting an image, we can decide what size the image will be if the user clicks on it. There are five size options available, or we can choose full for the image to be presented in its original size. The next field is for inserting the item title and the next one after that is for item description. For now I'm going to leave the description field empty. The following two fields are used if we want to add a button to this particular item that can lead users to a linked web page. The link text is for adding a button title, but the button will only be created if we fill the link URL field. For this tutorial I will not be adding buttons. The final field in this block of settings allows choosing whether the image will be displayed in a light box or on a separate page after clicking. You can click the add item button to include more items in the portfolio or you can copy a particular item you have already created by clicking the copy button next to it. This method saves time when creating multiple items with the same title, category, description or other data. Additionally, you can rearrange the order of items in the portfolio with a simple drag and drop movement. I will fill in the information for more items and then we'll move on to the settings. The Settings section allows basic layout customization of elements in the portfolio. First, choose the portfolio layout type, which is set to masonry by default. In masonry, items are resized to the same width, while their heights may be different. With the grid layout, all items will have the same size, so if your original pictures have different heights to width proportions, they will be trimmed to have the same size. The Justify options makes all items have the same height while their width can be different. And the list places items on top of each other with one item in a row. The Preset field options allow choosing how the textual content and a button are displayed. For example, they can completely or partially cover the image when users hover over item or be permanently visible at the bottom of each item. Then you can choose how many columns the portfolio will have and adjust this number for devices with different screen sizes. If you don't like the order of items in the portfolio, you can click the random order toggle to shuffle them. Continuing with the customization, we can adjust the gap size between items using a slider or by inserting a numeric value. If you've chosen the grid or justify layout, you can also change the item's height with options for different size devices. To split the items into pages, enable the View More button toggle. 
Choose the text for the button that opens the next page and set the number of items per page. The item's HTML title tag is set to H4 by default, but you can change it as well. Finally, there are two toggles that control whether titles and descriptions are displayed on the lightbox along with an image. Moving on to the Style tab, you'll find all the styling options for your portfolio categorized into four sections – Items, Filters, Content and View More button. In the Items section, customize the appearance of images by adding borders, padding and shadows. Filter settings allow you to change how the categories at the top of portfolio look. You can modify background colors and typography for their active and inactive stages. Content settings control the appearance of textual elements, including background design, location and typography. You'll also find style options for the More button here. Many of these style options can be set differently for displaying the portfolio on desktop screens, tablets and phones. The Advanced tab offers settings that are familiar to other Elementor widgets. For example, you can customize the portfolio position on the page, add a border to the entire widget, or set up an entrance animation. But I'm not going to use any of these settings for our portfolio. Let's look at the portfolio after a little bit of customization. As you see, thanks to the grid layout, all the items are the same in size and their titles are placed on top of the image paddings. We can select which images to see using the three categories and all tag, stylized as buttons, which change colors when they're active. When we click on one of the items, we see a large picture in a light box pop-up and navigation arrows on the sides, so we can switch between images without exiting to the portfolio layout. As you can see, all images are automatically resized to have uniform look. So, you see how easy it is to use the Jet Elements widget, whether you want to create an artistic presentation, showcase your team's work results, or any other purposes that require using a portfolio layout. By the way, if you found this tutorial helpful and want more insightful tips and updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Surprisingly, only 1 out of 3 viewers are subscribed. And we'd love to change that. See you next time.